Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Artanian TV. Another quick game of Interplanetary Ice Spy going on here. Back in Gale Crater, back at Mount Sharp, yet again. Uh, there's this rather strange looking wall of sand that the uh, the rover has come up to in the uh, recent, well, recent days. This this image was published only a few days ago. Um, if you want to if you want to get the latest stuff from NASA, all the latest images come up on this page. It's called uh, uh, Seven Days Images, or it's called photojournal.jpl.nasa.gov/new. I will have a link to it below. Um, but, but you can you can get this via my app if you download my free app. You can. You can check this out nice and easy. It links you straight to it. Um, if you look at the uh, the main links on, on the research page, there's loads and loads of stuff there. This is my favourite one because this gives you all the latest stuff from Ceres, Pluto, Mars, Earth. You know, you name it, it will be here. Basically, this is the one to have. This is probably the most important link you need, really. So let's crack on with it. So the image we have today is this one. Uh, Namib June on Mars. Now, interesting name that, <laughs> because the Namib Desert actually happens to be the very place where boats are seen in the desert. Huge ships, wrecked ships lying in the sand, where the sand has moved uh, towards the sea and is encroaching on the sea. And ship, various shipwrecks are then left marooned in the desert as the sand moves towards the sea. Uh, I, I did use an image in one of my videos, um, actually. Yeah, this one here. Uh, Mars ship confirmed from, from space, that video, which is doing rather well. Uh, rather slated for that, for using a picture of Earth on the front. But that is merely to get across what you should be looking for on Mars, because there are shipwrecks up there, and they are half buried, just like this one. Uh, so that, that was, I thought, uh, an appropriate image to use for that video. But some people didn't like it, but, uh, you know... So there we go. It's my video. I decided to put that picture on the front because it actually represents what to look for. So there we go. Let's get let's crack on with it because I'm starting to waffle on about other things here. First of all, let's have a look at this dune. Now I've got I didn't load I didn't download that massive uh, image there from from the main page because actually it's something like 175 megabytes or something like that. It's, it's rather huge. There is a smaller TIFF here, which is the black and white version. Uh, which is a lot easier to, to look at and download and everything else. It won't catch your hard drive on fire. Uh, and this is it. Now, this looks enormous, but actually it's, 16, it's approximately 16 foot tall. But it's very steep, especially on this part here. And there's like a complete wall of sand. Now, that got me thinking. I, I've been watching, watching uh, a few other people's videos recently. No one's really covered this yet. And... Uh, uh, I was sent in a sort of uh, uh, a question by Worm Terms Florida about this uh, the area and whether I could show a, a sort of an overview of some of the things I found. Uh, well, I can to a point, but unfortunately, this is looking the wrong way for a lot of the things I've covered recently. Uh, the the small boat or fishing boat I've called it that I found about a week or two ago is actually over here to the to the right. But because of the angle we're at, it's actually slightly, it's, it's kind of out of shot. It's, it's, it's over here somewhere, right off the edge of the picture there, uh, unfortunately. So you're not going to see it from this angle. Because what the rover's done is actually driven back to this area, along from the right here, and, and round to have a closer look at this dune and study the sand and everything else. Uh, but the, the, the fact that it's so steep is rather odd. Now, I, I do appreciate there is... Uh, le a lot less gravity on Mars, uh, around 50% less than we have, uh, which would account for uh, something looking this tall. Um, but it doesn't explain all of it. And I, I, I started looking at some of the aerial shots of the area. That, now, when you see it like this, now this is a ping image. I've, I've taken the, uh, the, I've downloaded the, the bit, not the bitmap, the TIFF image, and I've converted it to a ping, which is approximately about two thirds the size, file size. Uh, because the the TIFF image is really big, and I'm struggling for space on here at the moment. But this is crazy. I mean, uh, it's almost like a wall of, of sand. Now, this is partially an optical illusion, of course, because it's sloping away from us slightly. But it's very steep, and it does go into some detail on the page about, about how this sand actually kind of... Uh, there's like mini avalanches that you can see here, where the, the sand has kind of slipped, slipped down here. 
and then just kind of stops like that. I mean, hmm, yeah. How strange does that look? And I, <laughs> now, I do wonder whether all this is is completely real because this to me looks like it's been kind of fudged around with by NASA or JPL. This is a composite image, uh, or at least some of these are composite images. This actually may be one image. Um, judging by the size of it, let's have a look at the size. Uh, oh yeah, well it's it's been resized. Obviously, uh, it was probably made from about four, at least four uh, images composed together. So there will be the old join in there. I would have thought a bit like with some of these large panoramics. You can actually see the joins up here. You can see this line here and the line coming down. So that's obviously a panoramic that's been made up of multiple images. Uh, but this is really odd because um, what I'll do, I'll tell you what I'll do quickly, uh, is I'll, I'll get it up in here. Let's add some colour to that because obviously in black and white it doesn't really look that much like sand. Let's add a bit of um, colour balance and let's warm it up a bit and just give it a bit of sand colour. Now, I use this a lot, colour balance, uh, for things like this because it's very quick and you, you just add warmth to make it uh, more orange or, or brown looking and cooler for the, the more blue sort of look. Now to make it like sand you just get a black and white image and, and warm it up. I'm, I'm sure this is what they do with a lot of the Mars images. There we go. Now we have some sand. Uh, that's as simple as that folks. Um, get a black and white image and add a colour filter to it and it, there you have it. But this does look rather strange. Now I'm not saying this is fake of course because um, the angle we're at is rather strange also so it does look a bit odd but is that real? <laughs> I mean this is quite extraordinary it, I mean it probably because this is out of context this particular part of the uh, area is just a kind of snapshot of the wall of sand when you see the whole thing in its entirety it doesn't look as steep but the, this to me down here looks like it's been faked almost uh, very strange very strange indeed what have they done with that? Especially this bit here. So some of these colours look very different. Very strange indeed. So, answers on a postcard with that one. Is it real? Uh, it probably is. It's probably just where they've, they've composed the image out of multiple images. Okay, let's move on with that. I mean, that was really odd to me, that one. Uh, but it is only 16 foot tall. It's not as big as it looks in that image. Uh, Okay, right. Now, I also did some pictures whilst I was on holiday recently in Spain, which is why I've been away for a while, uh, in Malaga. And it struck me when I, I was at the airport that um, the mountain that overlooks Malaga Airport, which is here, actually looks rather similar to Mount Sharp, in, in, only in the aspect that it is a similar distance away from the airport. You can see the airport runway here and the mountain in the background and this is about uh two to three miles away this mountain here it looks closer but it's not i've actually zoomed in a bit there uh and if you're wondering what these things are up in the sky they are not ufos these are reflections of the lights in the airport and you can actually see if you look carefully you can see some numbers here like a seven three and a two or something backwards that's reflected from the, the pillar behind me and you can almost make out my hand just here near the center where I'm holding my uh, mobile phone to take the, the image. But this is a good example of how poor m mobile phone cameras can be, even though this is a 13 meg camera, uh, 13 megapixel image, uh, it's taken at 72 DPI or PPI, pixels per inch or dots per inch, same thing. And it's very fuzzy. Uh, it doesn't focus because it is tr what it's trying to do is focus on the window where you have these reflections. So the, uh, the autofocus is struggling with this because it's looking through a, a glass piece of glass. And when you, when you zoom in, none of this has any details. It's all fuzzy. And I've actually enhanced this image. I'll show you the raw image. This goes to show how good the cameras are on the rover. We can actually do a better job of this sort of thing. Because basically this was set on to autofocus and it was struggling a little bit with the window, as it would do. Uh, and this is the, the raw image and actually there's absolutely no detail in here at all even though it's quite a high number of pixels in the image it's fuzzy no detail the light conditions were a bit odd that day but actually it's because i was taking it from inside 
and looking through glass has kind of made it hard. But it just goes how, to show how easy it would be to fake some UFOs flying around above a mountain because you have two light reflections from the inside of the uh, building which show up on the window. Now, I could clip this out or I could put it in a video and claim that those were two UFOs uh, flying above Malaga Airport, but they're, they're not, obviously. And it just goes to show how easy it is. Anyway, enough of that. Let's crack on with Mars. The point I was trying to get to was that this fishing boat that I found recently is, is at the other end of this uh, Namib dune. And here's the video. I'll just show, very quickly play a little part of it. Um, looks like a little fishing boat. There it is. And you can see that it's got struts sticking out where there may have been a sort of roof or cabin on it. Initially, I thought it was a car. But then I looked at the shape, and then it's shaped like a boat, and it has a, a, a bow that's broken off here and split apart. And it's just lying there in the dirt. Uh, and it's very small. This is only, only about four foot long, uh, maybe five, possibly only three. Uh, it's very small. Um, uh, so what that says about the Martians... Maybe it's true they are quite small. I'm not saying they're like some people think they're one or two inches tall. I don't think that at all. I think they're probably about one or two feet tall rather than one or two inches. Okay, so there's that. You can go back and check that. Okay, there, there are a few more enhancements in there uh, actually. Uh, does it get any? Doesn't get much sharper than that because pro the problem is it, it's um it's quite small and far away. So as with a lot of these things, they don't look great when you zoom in. But here is the, the raw image of that, and you can see it clearly in the raw image uh, without doing anything to it. You can see a boat, a, like a broken boat there, but it's very small, uh, no more than five foot long. And there's Namib June here. You can see that this is the, the other end of it. Now, if we compare it to this image here, that is over here. So that image was taken as the rover drove from the right over here and then back around to have a closer look at the dune. Okay, so I thought I'd cover that. And basically, one thing that I, me and one or two other people like the Chris at Mars Anomalies have always struggled with is the fact that, Mar that Mount Sharp looks so small. Now, this is a distorted image, so it's difficult to get an idea from this. But why does it look so small when it's supposed to be something like four and a half kilometers, five kilometers high? If it's only about three miles away, which it is, about three, two to three miles away from the rover at the moment, why does it look so small? Because when you look at my photograph of Malaga, this is approximately the same distance. Yeah, it looks bigger. Now, this is approximately the same, well, probably closer actually. This is probably more like two miles, whereas the image we just looked at was probably nearer three, but it's not much different. This is zoomed in a little bit. And it, it looks about the same sort of size. Now, this is not a big mountain. This is nowhere near as big as, as Mount Sharp. And this is the unzoomed image. You can see the detail here. Now, if you imagine this flat area is the, the, the lake bed near Mount Sharp, and this is Mount Sharp in the background, then it kind of fits. You know, it's got a similar kind of profile. It, it, it's got, you know, uh, a similar sort of distance to it, but... Obviously, this is much smaller, but it doesn't look much smaller. So, what it must be is that the cur the, the, uh, the curvature of Mars is much less than Earth because it's, it's approximately half the size. Uh, so, that we're getting a lot of lens barrel distortion as well from the camera, plus the curvature of the planet, which is steeper. And the fact that, that Mount Sharp must be a very oblique-looking mountain and, and is also much, much bigger, so you never really see the top of it. Uh, what all we're doing is seeing the outer slopes of the mountain because the upper slopes are so far away and as the curvature of the planet are much have kind of moved it further back we can't actually see the top what we're seeing is the side of Mount Sharp one of the lower sides we're not actually seeing the main part of Mount Sharp I don't think um, that's my opinion anyway uh, I've, I may be corrected on that uh, but basically this the reason I took this photo was to try and work out what was going on with the actual scale of Mount Sharp, which has been confusing us for a number of years now. And a lot of this confusion, I'm sure, is down to lens barrel distortion and uh, 
things like that and also the fact that the often the the, the rover is much further away than we think it is and it, and all it's doing is using its powerful telephoto lens to zoom into Mount Sharp to get close-ups which makes it look like the rover is very close but it's not it's just the zoom on the camera so that is the problem when you're looking at these images but I thought that was interesting anyway because basically uh, Mount Sharp does tend to look way too small for something that's nearly four, you know nearly five kilometers high uh, it really does uh, and here's the Namib June again now this is from uh, Curiosity Traverse map, Sol 1196. There's Namib June. Now we're looking north here. This is north up, upwards here. Now, one thing that struck me about Namib June is that it's very straight. It has a very straight edge here. In fact, you can see when that little little thing came up there. Oh, hang on. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm too far zoomed in. Right, okay. You can see this edge here is very straight. Now, could this possibly be a building foundation here and the dune is kind of blown up against it from the north the, the winds blown it down up against this structure now uh, it is possible there are other buildings in this area and b behind this dune may be a flat wall which is why we have such a steep st uh, dune here and pile of sand it's actually leaning against a solid edifice or part a buried edifice like a large wall or building foundation now we have found building foundations before at places like dingo gap we have covered some of them in videos before so if any of you don't believe me go back through my videos or any any other mars researchers um and you will find that there's buildings at dingo gap that are very interesting and also very rectangular uh with straight edges now this may well be a building who knows here we go right so yes, this is Namib June here, and you can see this is the uh, Curiosity location, Sol to one two one five. Sorry, one two one five. Twelve fifteen. So this is where the rover is now, and it's actually backtracked. It, it was up here, and it's gone back to look at Namib June here, and you can see this very straight edge here. Now that is a bit suspicious to me. It looks like it may be a structure, an intelligent structure that it's that the June is blown up against now you can see a normal structure here a normal random natural structure here and the sand's kind of blown in a more natural shape although that's fairly straight <laughs> having said that but that looks a lot more natural to me as does this a rounded dune against a rounded sort of rocky outcrop here just here you see so that looks normal uh, now, now obviously this is a composite image you can see the join there in the middle uh, but this was interesting here. Now, I've been what, pondering over what this is for quite some time. This structure here, it looks rather like a, a collapsed bridge or, or um, a pontoon bridge or something. But it's probably natural, but it just looks really cool with structures going laterally across here like this. Maybe this was a bridge at one point. This was a river or stroke lake bed coming through here. So perhaps there was a huge bridge here, like a road bridge or something like that. And the road just went across and right up to the other side of Gale Crater, perhaps. Who knows? Uh, it could well have been. So there we go, folks. I'll, I'll cut it short there because I think I'm running over time. I hope that wasn't too long for you. Nice to be back uh, in the new year. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, a big hello to all my new subscribers. Thanks for joining, especially you guys from Sweden and Japan and South America and everywhere else. Uh, thanks for watching. Let's have another quick look at that. And if, if you haven't seen it already, uh, do visit my Mars Magazine page on, on uh, Facebook. It's it's an open group, and you can check out all the latest stuff on here. Lots of people are uh, posting some interesting stuff. You'll always see my latest things on here, and other people's. Uh, some cool stuff. Nev T is really cool. He puts up a lot of stuff. His Gigapan stuff. Uh, Sterling work he does there. And uh, lots of other people contributing as well. Some top Mars researchers from around the world. So do check out Mars Magazine on Facebook. Absolutely free. You can come along anytime and have a look and see the latest stories. I post things regularly pretty much every day. Anything that's to do with space or Mars or Pluto, anything like that will be up on here. Anything interesting. And also do go back and check some of my more recent videos uh, if you haven't already. Okay. You can also download my free app, which is available here. You just go to my page, 
and it's right here in the corner. I click on that and you'll get my free app. Okay. Links to millions and millions of space images and has all the links you need to do any of this research, uh, especially this one here, which is the best one. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you soon.